rolling brush of the outback. Rolling balls of brush and rolling balls. <laughs> Reminiscent of jingle bells, ornaments, and other spherical objects. Uh, the sea. Rolling balls of sea. <laughs> rolling balls of salt in the rolling balls of sea. <laughs> a dry tumbleweed desert immediately <laughs> next to a sea. Australia's a crazy place to be on Christmas Eve. A man sits in his bathing suit, shivering, cold nipples. <laughs> He's wondering where his family is because he is truly alone. <laughs> <laughs> Smash cut away from this man. A typical suburban home somewhere in Australia. Where's daddy? Asks little Sarah. <laughs> <laughs> we don't talk about him anymore, mother says. <laughs> I'm your daddy now. <laughs> A little boy looks out to the window, wondering the true meaning of Christmas. <laughs> With such a dysfunctional family, he's been told that Santa's not real about 1,200 times, but he never believes them. Every year, he asks for his dad to be home, and every year, the tree comes up empty. Yeah, he just wants his dad wrapped up under the tree, gagged and tied up so he can ask some hard-hitting questions. <laughs> like, Heart. why'd you leave us, Dad, you and, son of a gun? And to be clear, it's not an absent father. He only disappears on <laughs> Christmas Eve and Christmas. <laughs> He's actually really present in their lives. The other... 363 days That's of the right. year. It's only on Christmas that their mother says, call me daddy. <laughs> Every, she just gets mad that one day of the year. Dear Santa, it's me again. Liddy Jamie Furdet. Wait, I think that's a real person. Oh, well, I have. That's my name. Deal with it. I just want one thing this year, and I'll sign this letter with a tear. Dear Santa, won't you please grant my Christmas wish this year? Dear Jimmy, <laughs> you'll never get this letter, cause I'm Santa and I don't get weather. You'll never get anything from me, not even socks. That's why you don't get presents, you don't get stockings. To me, Jimmy, you are nothing. I'm tired of my job, I want to retire. I'm so lost, midlife crisis. Santa's got a midlife crisis. Midlife crisis. Santa's got a midlife crisis. Dear Jimmy, Mrs. Claus here. <laughs> Sorry for that last outburst. <laughs> Aging is really difficult. Getting older is the worst. Mrs. Claus tried to put me in a home. She tried to put me in an old folks home. I'd rather not be here. I'd rather be alone. Mrs. Claus, you terrify me. <laughs> midlife crisis. He's got a midlife crisis. Midlife crisis. He's got a midlife crisis. Nobody can solve this. Midlife crisis. So maybe Jimmy will give you your gift if you do a favor for us. I need you to help Santa remember the true meaning of Christmas. A five, six, seven, eight. Musical Monday, Musical Monday. Sit by the fire and hear it. Uh, Santa's got some weird secrets. Musical Monday. You just 
just heard the <laughs> wildly descriptive <laughs> prologue <laughs> to the musical uh, Santa <laughs> <laughs> about a shivering, hard nippled man in the. <laughs> <laughs> in the Australian outback, and a boy who just wants him to come home. Um, uh, what we don't see in that prologue okay. is um, Mrs. Claus. She sets out a quest for the boy to help him find, because you can't just tell any old boy where Santa is, or people will just come, come storming. They'll come storming the North Pole. Yeah, they'll try to sack his gifts. Sack him hard. <laughs> and so she says, I've planted five clues, five <laughs> gifts along the way to help you find yeah. my husband, my <laughs> clinically insane husband. That's right. <laughs> yeah, she should just get him therapy, but instead she's putting the weight of Christmas on a little boy's shoulders, which is honestly most Christmas movies, yep. if I'm being honest. Yeah, but I mean, they're old. They don't really believe in therapy. Yeah, they're yeah. pretty old school. But they stuff. believe in putting tremendous crushing weight on a child's shoulders. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so, uh, uh, and he looks outside. Well, uh, he looks outside and he finds peeking across um, an Australian tree, which they call over in Australia. Derbies. Derbies. <laughs> he looks over and sees a derby, uh, <laughs> the cold winter oceanic air upon the, the derby, <laughs> and he finds a present. And mm -hmm. the first present is... Grab your shovel, boys and girls. Um, so on our podcast, Zach always says, let's dig into this musical. And I always say, grab your shovel. And we always forget that we say it. And that's kind of the plight of improv. So now we can act it out. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so Caleb, um, uh, paint, us, paint us a little picture. How does this, what, it, what does this golden shovel do for the boy? And then you'll tell us the song the, that we hear that has right. to be relevant with yep. the with this Yeah. Movie. So he knows that he's going to find kind of the first thing that's going to help him on his journey. He sees the shovel sticking in the ground underneath the, the derby, <laughs> the tree. <laughs> and uh, he knows, oh, man, she's telling me where to start, and it's not go find a train and ride at the North Pole. I got to dig. <laughs> I got to go down. Oh, yeah. And that's all he knows. He that's says, right. I got to start digging. Yeah. Um, yeah, so he starts digging, and while he's doing it, he appreciates hard work for the very first time. <laughs> he's lived a gilded life. A perfect father who only messes up two days a year. And, you know, the most pain he's had is his finger hurting from playing iPad a little too hard. <laughs> so, um, yeah, he's appreciating, he's getting calluses, you know, and he's, um, he's getting sweat on his brow. He feels just like Shia LaBeouf from Holes, and he remembers that movie. He does. And they watch it every Christmas Eve. <laughs> That's right, it's a Christmas movie. And, and you know, he's, he's starting to have some empathy for his dad, so <laughs> <laughs> because his dad worked, he grew up working in the mines. He's having a lot of emotional <laughs> growth pretty early <laughs> into the show. <laughs> These are some pretty stark revelations. So, so he starts, uh, you know, he starts imagining um, what, how hard his life, his dad's life could have been. But then at the very end, he realizes, I'm just, you know, doing hypotheticals. My dad doesn't talk to me that much. I actually have no idea what his grow his childhood was like. Yeah, I didn't ask him any questions. Yeah. I was too busy playing iPad and watching Holes. Yeah. yeah. So he kind of daydreams, like, maybe what it could have been like. Yeah, what is that song. Exactly. It's like, what if I had gotten to know, know my dad? What would that mm. be like? Yeah. Um, in this song. In this song. Um, digging up old memories <laughs> that may or may not be true. <laughs> Parentheses, may or may not be true. <laughs> Ow. Ow. 
I remember daddy no, in his bedroom. No, he left on Christmas Eve. He left way too soon. But I have a memory. Him grabbing a gun and him stopping the impending alien invasion. Digging up memories which may or may not be true. Digging up memories. I wish I knew my dad better than this. <laughs> Solo yeah. song? Okay, cool. <laughs> what else do I remember about Poppy? There was that one day, one that late night. He said, I gotta go to bed. So you best go to bed. That was it. Next memory. <laughs> he was eating cereal, I think. Maybe it was Tricks or Captain Crunch. I don't remember because I was playing Roblox. I left cause he had to go on the pirate ship that's right that sounds so much cooler than the memories it's time to let it rip he grabbed a sword like a buccaneer and he saw old black beard and he said i'm gonna drive my sword through you this is for my son digging up memories of digging them up i don't care if they are true I love my son so much And I'm gonna explain to him the crazy things I do I left on Christmas Eve So that I can dig him a diamond from the earth I love that boy so much I've loved him every single day since his birth Digging up memories Why am I singing this song? This was your gift anyway <laughs> Digging up memories <laughs> And he says that line in the show, why am I singing this song? And he points to, uh, he points out there into the outback. He's talking to his dad. He's like, you should be singing this song. Because in that song, he gets, he starts to get angry again. He has some emotional growth, but then he gets mad again. He's like, why am I a child being forced to create memories for my father? <laughs> right. That should be on him. Yeah. Yeah. But, and he's right. And he's right. <laughs> And as he's digging, he hears a clink as he hits solid something. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. he digs up a little. Woo! Woo! <laughs> All right, Kayla, this is from me to you. Ooh. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Uh, it's a mushroom. It's a night mushroom nightlight. Night what do I tell <laughs> you yeah, now? So, I love this. I'm so I, I tell you why how it pops into the story. So yeah. um, he digs, and I said I, I said it was a clink, but it was actually a, a squelch. <laughs> and <laughs> he, hits, he hits mushrooms, and um, <laughs> this was the second gift that oh Santa, goodness. Mrs. Claus, gave this young boy. Does this count as a second clue? <laughs> Yes. It, it will make sense. Sure. Let, me, let me just explain a little something about Australian laws. Mm. Um, they're a little bit laxer on, like, like you know, substances and stuff. Psychedelics? Yeah. Like psychedelics. Right. So he hits, um, he hits some golden <laughs> teachers. So Santa, Mrs. Claus <laughs> wants a kid to do <laughs> drugs? In Australia, they're all criminals. <laughs> <laughs> Still to this day. <laughs> and then the boy about to eat this mushroom realizes, I don't want to sing another song. And <laughs> he looks on the other side of the mushroom, and what it says is, go ask your mother, written in Sharpie. And uh, <laughs> that's the clue. And then take it from there, Caleb. <laughs> yeah. So he's like, oh, man, okay, I need to go ask my mom. What? I've got this mushroom. <laughs> could be good for me, could be bad for me. I don't know. It's a mystery. I yeah. bet my mom knows what my next step would be on my journey if I just ask her. Say, yeah. here's what I'm trying to do, Mom. What's next for me? Mm -hmm. And uh, she replies, 
and uh, she teaches him a couple of lessons, things that she's waited till he was mature enough to learn, you know? Not like, but uh, now that he's, uh, he knows how to work a shovel, you know? There's some, there's some, there's some things that words. can he's help him in his life. Yes. Yeah. He's grown up a lot. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. In the song. In the song, uh, it's about time you know. <laughs> okay. You might be growing hairs in weird places, and that's normal. You might want to ask a girl or boy to the winter formal. That's not strange, it's to be expected. And if you start acting like a jerk, that's normal, cause that's what your dad did. Everything is gonna be okay. Just as long as you don't follow in your father's mistakes. <laughs> You'll be all right. <laughs> Everything's gonna be okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As long as you follow in your mother's way. And if you feel a strong urge to go to the North Pole, that's the same thing that. They're not violent and don't punch a wall. And remember that your feelings are okay. And therapy's not bad after all. Everything's gonna be okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. As long as you don't follow your father's mistakes. Any questions? I've covered every topic. <laughs> I think that, I think that does it, Daddy. <laughs> and Merry Christmas. Hey, snowmen go through puberty too. <laughs> <laughs> he shuts the door <laughs> and leaves. Um, understandably, the young boy is confused. <laughs> <laughs> He's now two clues in and no closer to Santa. Or so he thinks. Thinks. Mm, yep. Until he uses the he uses the shovel to bury the mushroom, and the mushroom grows into you guessed it an arrow, and it points him, <laughs> and it points him in the direction of the next clue, and he walks and walks and walks some more. Yeah, you know how long in miles Australia is. No. Big. Big. <laughs> it's big miles. Big miles. <clears throat> Until he collapses. And right as he collapses, what does he see in the corner of his eye? But. <laughs> All right. Both of y'all come up here. Let's give it up for producer Ethan and producer yeah! Gabe. Yeah! So he collapses and finds... <laughs> oh, yeah, open it. Wow. <laughs> We've got saltines, the 365 stupidest things ever said, <laughs> <laughs> and jelly beans. Yes. So after coming in contact with shrooms and very <laughs> ill-said devices, you can tell he was mentally, mentally drained and probably not thinking too clearly after and such thirsty, a long time. And thirsty, because everyone's thirsty on Christmas. Yes, thirsty 100%. And what's better for a thirsty boy than saltine crackers? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's just the trick, isn't it? When you become thirsty enough, you become naturally drawn to the nearest clean water source. Mm. It's instinctive. <laughs> And of course, what source of water is cleaner than the North Pole, <laughs> literally or figuratively? Because in a very real sense, 
wherever Santa is, that is the North Pole. Yeah. And so... <laughs> He's, I haven't had my moment yet. Yeah. He's walking through Australia, drawn to the nearest water source. <laughs> and what should he find there except the guardian of clean water, the H2O dingo? <laughs> and yes. remind me, Gabriel, what does that have to do with anything that you're holding right now? The saltines. The dingo doesn't speak in a very straightforward manner. Mm. Yeah, he's but stupid. the more jelly beans he feeds to the dingo, the more, co more coherent his instructions become. I totally get it. Ah, now's my moment. Is it okay um, if we borrow? We won't rip them. Can we borrow your calendar? Uh, is that a calendar? Uh-huh. All right. Oh, and sorry, one more thing. Uh, and they meet the dingo, and what's the next song? You need to introduce the next song. Riddles for you. <laughs> Gabe, you dog. Uh, you and, um, dog. The dingo has two heads. Appreciate what you what. Be are the make you appreciate what, what you dad. <laughs> Every time I eat chicken, I eat it with my hands like they did in the olden days. And I know what you're thinking. Surely to eat chicken, there are other ways. <laughs> attack against the messenger does not address the substance of the objection. turns into a sled, <laughs> which is easily climbed by a child. Um, and the eyes are the footholders. <laughs> An important detail the playwright wanted us to understand. Yeah. This mystical dingo evaporates into a sled. <laughs> The foothold I, ne in the I never said it evaporated. <laughs> I said oh. the body turns into a sled. Yeah. It's a reduced, reused, recycled This situation. poor kid is regretting this entire journey. <laughs> He's saying, do I really need my dad on Christmas Eve and Christmas? <laughs> Starting to wonder if Mrs. Claus is mentally there as well, you he's, know? This he's is... wondering if Santa got so crazy for Mage, why would, it, why would I trust his wife anymore? Right. And he's just about to give up hope as he puts his footholds in, these, in this dingo's eyes and sleds up to the edge of the North Pole. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But something magical happens. For the first time in this journey, yes. something happy happens. That's right. Something wonderful happens. A Christmas fairy appears. Mm -hmm. Yes. And gives him water for the first time in 36 <laughs> hours. <laughs> he wipes the saltines from his mouth and says, Bless you, Christmas fairy. Thank you. I was about to die from thirst. <laughs> um, and she says, You look weary, young boy traveler. Yes. And hands him... A very useful gift. That's right. Yeah! Expertly wrapped. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> oh man. Uh, yes. Um, <laughs> mittens with no regard for wrist safety. <laughs> And a back scratcher. That's right. So, so she, why does she give this she to him? She says, these are the tools to catch the Grinch. <laughs> <laughs> because um, you wouldn't touch him with a 10-foot pole, but you can catch him with a two-foot back, back scratcher. Because <laughs> there's nothing the Grinch loves more than a he, good scratching. Yeah, he loves yeah. a little tickle on his fur. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And the gloves are for protection so you don't get the termites or whatever in his body. Yeah. I don't know. He's gross. He, he's riddled, <laughs> yeah. And the boy says, oven mitts, huh? <laughs> are you sure these aren't for you? <laughs> Christmas says, family, did you give me a gift for you? She says, <laughs> you know I rarely ever use oven this, says, but you know who does a lot more baking? She says, you, Christmas fairy. <laughs> she says, maybe you should use them a little more often. Interesting. They're really cute and dainty, almost meant for smaller, cuter, daintier hands. Look, if you don't want them, she says. I don't think I need this to catch the Grinch. This is for you, Christmas fairy. But this, this actually will help because I do have a broader chest than you. And sometimes I ask other people to scratch. And now they won't have to do that anymore because I have this. Yeah, but it is for the Grinch. It is for the Grinch. (laughs) To be clear. Yeah. She um, says, no, no, no. Okay, maybe you're right about the oven mitts. Sorry for the trick. <laughs> but in order to bring your father home for Christmas, you, you will have to catch have the Grinch. have to catch the Grinch. For uh, some reason. In this song, you're an itchy one, Mr. Grinch. <laughs> <laughs> They said they got termites in your smile But I think that they were lying I see those tiny little critters zipping up on your feet You can't reach down there, you've admitted defeat So come on here and give me a cinch Mr. Grinch, I'm gonna give you a Christmas itch You're an itchy one My cheek feel greasy, warm, <laughs> leprosy. <laughs> it feels warm. <laughs> leprosy doesn't stop your blood from circulating. <laughs> and I don't care if I get leprosy too. In 
fact, give it to me instead. I'll take it. I don't have a dad to cuddle with me anyways. Mr. Grinch, you weren't trying to steal Christmas. You were trying to steal medicine from people's cabinets. <laughs> you have a horrible ailment that they ignored for years. Yeah. Your only friend's a dog. We should have seen it. <laughs> of course you were looking for a cure in the Who Hash. You've tried everything else. The mayor comes out. Are you going to let this leper in our town? And the police officer says, I heard him. And he said he has... Leprosy. Leprosy. <laughs> Leprosy. Uh, <laughs> there it is. <laughs> and, um, okay, so that's the end. I that's guess. the song. Yeah, that's right the there. Song. <laughs> yeah. And, um, yeah, and so the Grinch, um, you know, the boy cures him. With just basic <laughs> over the counter, like, I think penicillin yeah, does it. Yeah, I think, like, I know, I think it's more intense than that, but he can <laughs> get it. Shrooms. The shrooms. <laughs> the shrooms. He rubs shrooms it. on his leopard body. Mm-hmm. And, and it turns him into the most beautiful who in town. Yeah, Martha the May. The muscles. <laughs> <laughs> um, and he was always beautiful. He was always gorgeous. He yeah, just, his skin still, was falling off. Yeah, he's yeah. green and hairy, but... Now he's got his skin. Okay, so that happens. The Grinch, <laughs> the Grinch says, now that you've saved my life um, and I've been a father figure to you, I'll give you a piece of advice to go to the North Pole. And he hands him another gift. Is this the last gift? I think so. And this is the gift that helps him find and confront Santa. That's right. It mm-hmm. leads him straight to his door. With my letter on it. Oh, <laughs> the that's most, so cute. The most meaningful of yes. gifts we've had today. Well, Gabe, give us the right, little right, nugget. Yes. Uh, so, he's looking for the final direction, and he receives a stocking with the letter E on it. <laughs> as unintuitive as it may be, <laughs> the key to finding the North Pole all along was to go east. <laughs> Because East was where the wise men went. <laughs> Learning, going back to the true meaning of Christmas at the beginning all along. That's right. The mm-hmm. North Poles. He and needs Bethlehem. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. That's right. And so he goes through the non-confrontational parts of the Middle East <laughs> to finally... Qatar. Yes, Qatar. To finally get to not just Santa... And not just Mrs. Claus, but who is running the old folks' home the entire time? His dad. Oh, my. Oh, my. Yes. 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 He strolls up to the... He comes in the back way because it's, you know, it it also phases east. So he comes in the backyard. But the the old folks' home (laughs) is there on the beach and huddled on the sand is a... a cold, hard nippled man. <laughs> yes, that's true. Right. Colin, back to the beginning. We yes. thought yes. it was the Australian desert, but right. it was yeah. actually Bethlehem with the, <laughs> o- with the Sea of Galilee right there. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And he is feeding Santa, spoon feeding him <laughs> because. <laughs> <laughs> Because that's what you do in an old folks. Yeah, he's spoon feeding Santa creamed mushrooms with a large spade. <laughs> um, yeah. Wait, and- he's spoon feeding him with a shovel, and that's why the shovel is one of the clues. Yeah, that's what a the large spade is. The boy says, "How did I not guess?" <laughs> Shovel, old folks home, old folks home, Bethlehem, Bethlehem, old Santa, dementia. That's right. And he's like, ah, oh, but I am thirsty. In this song, you are my Christmas present. <laughs> Papa. Is, is the this Christmas where- bells. <laughs> Your s- stingo sled is riding away on its own. I hope it can see. I jammed my feet in its eyes for <laughs> thousands of miles. <laughs> Papa, is this where you are? Every Christmas Eve and Christmas? Spoon-feeding Santa with a shovel? Yeah. 
Christmas Eve gets lonely, even for Santa. Sometimes he needs a break, mushroom soup and a cold orange Fanta. <laughs> so I'm here by his side, popping up a cold one. Don't we boys deserve a little fun? Oh my goodness, Papa, my words, I'm at a loss. I never realized my dad was proxy Santa Claus. I see what's happening here. Santa's gone senile. So you, Papa, stepped in and you went the extra mile. So every Christmas Eve, you abandon your family so you can do Santa's job for That's the one part I haven't figured out yet. I'm in love with Santa Claus. <laughs> <laughs> but we live in a time where that's <laughs> not socially acceptable. My respect for you was <laughs> up here, and now it's fallen down a bit. <laughs> Still haven't explained to me why you're not wearing a shirt. Vacation where we get to have some fun, <laughs> and you're interrupting <laughs> so you can get gone once we have our heart to heart. Me and Santa can start our getaway. Wow, mommy asking me to call her daddy makes so much sense. I take back. That you're my present <laughs> My life's a living nightmare This whole day's has me nothing but scares I wish I was the person Who I was before I know What happened here today That's wrong. Has nothing to do with your orientation. Let me explain a little bit of my frustration. <laughs> you skipped out on my family to make out with geriatric age and time. You're a bad dad. <laughs> this is a real sad Christmas story for me. But wait, if you're here, Making out with Santa, who's delivering the gifts to all the girls and boys out there? If you're not gonna step up, well then I will. One of the dumbest things a person can say? Oh, we sure have been riding a long time. I'm hungry. Good thing we brought these Christmas saltines. <laughs> it's sure getting dark. I wish I had something to light my way. Plug? Click. I'm doubling up on things, but the mushroom light. There it is. What was the other thing? Hmm. Oh, yeah. Going east. We're helping out the boys and the girls east and working our way backwards. Dingo's back is pretty itchy. <laughs> I see what you meant, Mrs. Claus. You didn't mean this Santa to learn the true meaning of Christmas. You meant this Santa <laughs> to learn the new meaning of Christmas. You wanted me to be the new Santa. Oh, my brain hurts so hard. Because according to the Christmas Claus, 
that would make Santa Claus my wife. <laughs> she pops up from behind the sleigh. <laughs> 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 well, the clause is clause says I can be your new mom instead. Thank goodness. <laughs> because your mom is your daddy. <laughs> wow. Wow, and that's how the musical ends. Can you believe it? You know, there was a critic on Broadway. They said, this song won the most Tonys for the most anticlimactic ending of songs in Broadway history. That was absolutely incredible. There's a prize for everything. But you know what else is incredible? That we're able to meet for the holidays. And a Christmas story doesn't have to be good for people to still meet together and feel something. That something isn't always the Christmas spirit, but that doesn't matter. What matters is that we're here as friends. More friends. Sometimes friends. Here at. <laughs>